Hello and welcome. This is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And in this week's video, we're going to be going through a step by step wizard in Excel that you can create to quickly allow a user to enter multiple amounts of information uh, all in one screen. Uh, so that's going to be a great training. Let's get started. <laughs> In this video, what I want to do is I want to show you a way, just like we do with uh, large software applications, that allow the user to go through a multi-step process on setup. Uh, often there's a large amount of information that we need from a user uh, when we initially uh, start up the application and we want to take the user through multiple steps to do this. Uh, one way we can do this is through what we call a step-by-step -step or wizard. Uh, and in this uh, video, we're going to go through the training on how that is done. And uh, basically what we have is often a setup screen with a large amount of information. And instead of presenting this screen to the user where they have to fill out all of the information, we'd like to take them through a, set a setup uh, or a start wizard where they can uh, enter information into steps. So for example, in this uh, sample, we have a company setup where we have multiple company information. We have account lists, default accounts, and general settings. And what I want to do is if we if they change a company name, for example, let's go Acme Corporation, then I want that automatically to change in the setup screen here, right? So any changes made in the wizard are automatically saved in the setup. And I'm going to show you how to do all of that to transfer the information with just one line of code. Likewise, if they do make any changes in the uh, setup screen, we also want those uh, changes to take place in the wizard as well so that uh, you can see that it's automatically in sync with the wizard screen. So we want that as well. So we're going to show you how to do that. And uh, we also want in this setup screen, we want to know which screens have been completed and we want to mark those with a check mark. We want to know which uh, screen or step uh, is our active step and we want to know which ones are coming up in the future. And we can do this with actually three different button types and I'll show you how that is done. In actuality, we actually have three different buttons here. Uh, they look like uh, just one, but it's actually three different ones. And we'll go ahead and show that to you into the selection pane we go. If you don't have the selection pane in your shortcut, you can add it. But you can also uh, go into page layout here and select selection pane from here. Okay, so what we have here is, let's go ahead and show all, okay? and then we can close this. Now what I have here is actually shapes on top of each other. So if we move the shapes down and move this shape down as well, we can see that there's actually three different states for each shape. We have what's called a completed, and I've called this step one complete. We have a step one active, okay? So that's our active when it's active. And we also have our pending, step one pending. So we have three different states for each button. And uh, that is how we do that for each button. So the idea is when we click on a specific section, we want to make the others pending uh, or we want to make them completed. So for example, when we use two, we want to make sure one has been completed and we want to make sure that the remaining two are set as pending. And the same thing here. So now we've shown the, the two completed buttons Right? And we've uh, made this one active, and in the future, this one will be pending. And to create these shapes, what I did was I entered shapes. And uh, let's go ahead and do that so you can see how that's done. And I used uh, this particular shape here, uh, which is <clears throat> this one right here. And this is the uh, Pentagon shape that I've used here. And then I've uh, basically duplicated that and changed the border. So, so I've done that and then I put them on top of each other like this. Okay. And for the last one, 
Okay, so you can see how that works. And for the last one, I've used just a general rectangle. So if we insert a general rectangle, right, here, but yet we put it in the back, right, and if we put that in the back, you can see how that might, might work, right? So we can do that like this, and now we've put it in the back. So when we do format, send, uh, excuse me, send backward, send to back, right? And now you can see how we've duplicated that and these would be up on the, in the front. So we bring this to the front, bring forward, and then bring, bring forward here. And then one more time. Okay, great. So you see how we can mimic this, this status just by using shapes just like that. And then of course, uh, what I've done is I've assigned each one of these a specific state and then they each have their own uh, uh, specific colors as well so we can differentiate. And then I've just simply assigned a check mark to these simply by inserting a symbol here. And I've used uh, the check mark symbol right here and you can find that in Wingdings or, or a number of different fonts. And so that is how I've gone about this. Let's go ahead and delete those now. And then to run the macros, basically what I have done is, which I have shown you in some other videos, is as you can see, the columns here are changing. Now, the critical thing is with these is when, for these, when you go into the properties, format shape, Okay, and you look in the properties, we want to make sure that we do not move or size with the cells. Do not move. And that's critical because while we want the columns to move, we want these shapes to be stationary. So as we click them, they don't move. As well, the borders, uh, I've assigned a shape to this and I've put it in the back. So as you can see, this is just a simple border, but it's in the back of those shapes so that only the bottom rows shows so only the bottom shows up and not the top uh, borderline and so that is how we've done it. let's go ahead and take a look at the macros to make this happen we can go into the developers tab into visual basic we go alt f11 will also get you there of course if you don't have the developers tab visible you can go into file options and then the customize ribbon, and then make sure the developers tab is uh, selected right here. So back into VBA, we have some uh, just macros here. They're very simple macros, and I've broken them down into five different steps, five different macros in one single module. We have step one, step two, step three, step four, and then a finish. And although it's a good amount of code, it's very, very simple, really. And basically, all we are doing is uh, hiding and displaying different shapes. Now, you see we have the pending, right? So when we click, let's go ahead and move this over so you can see both at the same time. And so let's go through step one. When we click step one, we want, we want the active button, right? Remember, this is step one active. We want this displayed. We want also, I want the pending to show up for these three buttons. Everything else is hidden. So two, three, four, and five all should be pending. And that's just what we've done within this code. So if you look, step one pending, we're not going to show that. Step two pending, yes, we want to show that. Three and four. We want to show these three as pending, right? And then basically, uh, everything else is false except step one active remember this is our active shape we want to show that okay. the others are not active so all the other active shapes are hidden uh, all of the completed there's nothing complete on step one there's nothing complete so far so we want to hide those shapes and also step uh, Step, uh, let's see, now we go into the columns. Here's the columns. So we want to show columns G through L. Okay. G through L, we want to display those columns. And, and the other ones from M through A, A I, M through A I, we want hidden. So if you want to see it, let's go ahead and unhide these so you can see what it actually looks like when they're all in hidden. 
and let's go down and uh, let's go ahead and make that change. I'm going to undo that. And what we're going to do is uh, we are going to set this. That's an important part. So we want to set this. Let's go ahead and set that boundary just right. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that this does not size. So size and properties. And we always always want to make sure that move but don't size is OK. We definitely don't want. You see how when I unhid those, this became very long. That's because we don't want to hide. So now when we unhide it, this shape remains, keeps the same. So we'll zoom out. And basically, you see four different sections here, right? Four different sections. So the idea is we want to show on step two, we want to show this and hide everything else. On step three, we want to show this, hide everything else, and step four, the same thing. Okay, and I'll go down to what what this is, and I'll, I'll go over what what this is in just a few moments' time. So zoom back into 100%. So that is the idea. We're basically hiding and showing columns what we want to display. So when we click one, everything else is hidden. When we click two, everything else is hidden except columns M through U. When we click Three, we want to show V through AA, everything else is hidden. And that's just what we've done in the code here. So when you look back in the code, you'll see G through L, entire column hidden equals false, yet M through AI is hidden, and that is true. So we're going to hide those. The next up is we have groups, right? We have some shapes that are part of, for example, this group here, step three group. Let's go start with step one. Step one group is this border, right? It, it's made up of this border and it's made up of this next button. Okay, so that's part of step one group, right? So I want to show this group on step one, but I want to hide this group for all the other steps because in step two has its own group. Step two has its own group. We want to show that on step two and hide the others. So each step has its own group of shape and that shape includes generally a border and it generally includes uh, the previous and next buttons or the buttons that are assigned with that. Step four would have a previous and finish button so it's almost the same. Let's go ahead and make this one a little bit smaller. And when you want to shape a group and it's already in a group, double click it so we can shape that border. We'll move that in to line that up just right here. Okay, so now we've got that lined up. So that is why we have groups also. Groups are assigned to specific sections. So you'll see in step one, we're showing step one group and yet we're hiding all of the other three remaining groups. And then also what I've done is I've selected the cell. What I want is when we go into a step, I want to select a, the first cell in that particular uh, set of cells because I don't want I don't want just some odd. I want to I want to get the user to at least make sure they know that the active cell is right there. So for example, when we select company name, I want to make sure that this cell is selected. So within those macros on the last step I've selected and this I've selected a particular or I told VBA to select a particular cell in that particular section all right so that is so that is basically it and we've done the same thing for step two we've we're now we now want to step one pending is false right and three and four are true when we go to step two three and four get the pending which is the the black and the gray those are pending uh, two is the active shape and the uh, first one has been completed right so we want to show the completed shape on step one and we've done that through vba here you can see step one completed true the others are false no other no other step has been completed and so again, we've hidden the columns. Um, we're showing the columns we want to show, and we're hiding the columns we don't want to show. Showing, uh, hiding step one group, we're going to show step two group, and then we're going to hide the remaining. So that is how we did it. 
Now the other thing is the stop calculation and reset calculation. Those are simple macros and we'll go ahead with those two macros. All that does is it stops the calculation and stops green, screen updating. And this helps uh, keep from when you select screens, it, you, get a, you get a little bit of a delay or a flash. And what that does is it kind of stops it a little bit. So it's a little bit less of a flash. So that helps it just make it a little bit faster and, and the code runs a little bit smoother. So that is why I have added stop calculation and reset calculation. So step three is the same. Step four is relatively the same also. And the last one is a finish, right? All we've done is I've marked them all completed, right? Although you generally don't see that, right? When you go to finish, we're going to run the macro and then I'm going to set it to uh, back to the setup screen, which is where. And if you look back on the wizard, you'll see that all the steps have been completed. Oh, except I'm gonna have to fix that one. Look at that. I actually, I think it's a size issue with that. Let's go ahead and increase it. Oh, there it is. Okay. So we just need to increase that size a little bit. So let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller, 2.44. All right, that looks good. Okay, so we had a size issue with that one. Now it's showing good. So you see they're all completed. So that's what finish does. Finish marks them all complete. You see, step one, two, three, four are all completed and everything else is hidden, right? There's nothing pending, right? So we've hidden all the pending buttons. There's nothing active, so we've hidden all the active buttons. So we're good, we're good with that. And then what I've done is I, I've, uh, I wanna activate the setup screen. I want to activate that once we have completed it. So when we click finish, it automatically goes to the setup screen, which is here so you can see any changes. So that is what I have done. So that's it for how we go from step to step to step. And now basically what I want to do is whenever we make a change here, I want it to show up in the setup screen automatically. So when we change this to Acme Corporation, I want automatically in the setup change for it to do that. And we can do that with just one line of code because we have done what I call uh, cell mapping. We've done cell mapping. And basically what that is, is I want to say, hey, if we make a change to this cell, I want that change to be reflected here. And if we make a change to this cell, I want that change to be reflected right here. And how do we do that? Well, the idea is we know that if we make a change to I8, we need that change reflected in the setup screen for F5, right? So basically we want that. Now we can write a lot of code that says uh, if there's a change to I8, then make the change and, and you know we could do that for every single cell but I don't want to write that much code that's an awful lot of code for so I'm always looking for a simple shortcuts now if we know this is I8 we also know that two down I10 any change to I10 right we know we want to change in the setup screen F6 so if we know that which cell is going to be affected we can map it map it and I'll show you how that is done so if we go exactly 50 rows down we're on we're on row 8 here if we go actually 50 rows down here we have a very similar cell but we've mapped it okay this is it this is our mapping and this is going to save us tons of time it's a little bit time to set this up to actually control so in the setup screen this is F5 right this is F6 F7, F8, so on. So we know it. So I've done the same thing here, F5, F6, F7, F8. The reason, and we have mapped that so it's so much easier in the code. We can do all of that with one line of code. We've gone exactly 50 rows down, exactly. So that means that 64, that means this is gonna be row 14. So if we look up, we'll see row 14. So we go the same column, 50 rows down, it's going to tell us exactly what cell to put that in. Exactly what cell. So when we change, make a change here, we know exactly what cell. I think I have that pre-formatted. Uh, missing one number for the phone number. So when we make that change, automatically we know what cell in the setup screen that's going to 
that's going to control F8. F8 in the setup screen is going to be the cell that we change. F8 is the cell. So let's go ahead and back into our VBA code and see how we did that there. Into, into the VBA model we go here. We're going to look at the wizard screen. This is on sheet on sheet code and see look it's just one line of code and I'll expand it it's a little bit longer of a line but we'll show you how that's done first of all we're going to use worksheet change that means if we make any kind of a change to a cell then we want something to happen so what is the range now that range is a1 actually it doesn't need to be a1 it could be let's go ahead and set that exactly right the first is i8 i8 let's go ahead and set that to i8 i8 is the first cell the uppermost left cell that we are going to be affecting i8 and the last one is ag28 the last cell which is four right ag and then actually 28 is not but 28 we, we do need the row here right so the last row that is affected is here 28 so that's why we've set the boundaries. The last possible row is 28. The last possible column is AG. So that's how that is done. Back into the code we go. Go ahead and dip. So we know if, if something changes on that intersection, if something changes in that range, then we need to do something. Also, we have another condition, and active sheet wizard now this prevents a loop because when we make a change to the wizard we want it to change the setup screen and I have the same similar code in the setup screen if we make a change to the setup screen it changes to the wizard if we do not have this line of code then it's gonna run a loop and it's gonna cause a problem so we don't want that in other words if we change one it changes the other change 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 right so we have to say that means the users actively working on the wizard sheet so that helps us, this keeps us from having a loop. So that's the other condition. Then what do we want to happen? So if these two conditions, if there is a change to I8 through AG28, and if the active sheet name is wizard, then what do we want to happen? Well, here's what we want to happen. We want on sheet one, that's the setup we want what I want to do is I want to what I really want to do is I want to get this value I want to know I want this value right here how do we get this value right I want k5 I need to know what cell to change on the setup screen well we know it's the column right so if we change the email we know it's this column right we know what column because the column doesn't change but the row changes right? so but what is the row it's here it's eight and here it's 58 so we just add 50 right we need to get this value I need to know k5 it's the it's the column the column that we're working on which is target column in the code and the row is target row plus 50 target row is here plus 50 is right here that will get us k5 we need that so here it is target row plus 50 and the target column what is that value what is that value okay that value is the range of sheet one right so in other words if we were to change this to k8 right then we know k8 then we know sheet one k8 equals target value right but it's not always going to be k8 right so we have to replace this with a variable and that is how we do it Right. So in actuality, in this instance, it would be K8, but in every other instance, it would not be. So uh, that is why we, we do it that way. Oh, let me go ahead and redo that. A1, let's see, it was I, our first column is I, right, I8. So let's go ahead and make that update, I8. So that is how we do that. And we do the same thing for the same thing for the setup screen. We've done exactly the same thing. When we go back into the setup screen, I have also mapped out everything. So when we make a change to here, right, automatically we go back into the wizard, we look at our account list, we scroll down, we see it's here. 
So I've done the exact same thing, the mapping, cell mapping, in the setup screen. If you look down here, everything is mapped out. And I know it takes a little bit of time to map these things out, but it's super easy when it comes to the code. So, so even though this user, so if you don't like to code, this is a great option for you because you, you can do so much with just a single line of code. So I've mapped everything out. In other words, T28 in the wizard, right, is T28. Okay, so, so that's how it's mapped out. And you, you delete that here, and we, and we go back up, and we see it's gone here. So that's a great instance of how we've done mapping. And the start wizard simply does is a start it up, and it goes to this screen, and, like, and it goes to each one. So using this code, we've been able to do the same thing on both sheets and that's how we keep two two sheets in basically they're they're syncing to each other and it's a great way when you want to sync and then sync means both ways right when you want the setup screen to equal exactly what's in the wizard screen and you want the wizard screen to equal exactly now we can't put links here right because this has to be variable we can't just we can't just link it to to this cell because we need to change it, although that would equal, but we need the user to, to change this, and we can't change it if it's a, you know, if it's a formula. We want them to be able to change it to any, you know, any company, any email. Send emails from fred at fred.com. Okay, so we want to be able to make them changes and then have those changes automatically reflected in the setup screen here. So that is the wizard, and it's a great tool because we can walk users through a step-by-step -step process, and with this control, you can add as many steps as you like, uh, and you can assign previous. Now, I've done the same thing. You know, In this account, I've done default uh, accounts list with the same thing as previous, so I've assigned macros to the previous buttons, too. For example, if we're on screen three and I've assigned a macro, I'll assign macro number two to this, right? Step two to the previous. And of course, this would be step four. I will have assigned macro step four to this. So we can assign macros to previous and next buttons as well so that we can uh, easily navigate to our cells, to our particular steps. That is a step-by-step -step wizard, probably something you don't see very often in Excel, but I am happy to create these for you. I hope you enjoyed this shorter training. Not all of them are an hour long. And if you have any questions or comments, please, of course, uh, put them in the comments below. And uh, I appreciate you sharing this. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day.